The Legend of Genji has arrived, and its world building might be as good as in the original animated shows. Now I already know what you're thinking. Genji is not canon, so why am I even talking about an unofficial fan-made comic? Well the answer is quite simple, it's because Genji is legit. So legit that even the official Avatar YouTube channel has acknowledged it. But I understand the skeptics, because I was just like you once, ignoring Genji simply because it was fan-made. I thought I was being a loyal avatar purist, but in reality, I was just wrong, and I was missing out too because Genji is so good. When the first few episodes dropped a few weeks ago, I was absolutely floored by how authentic it felt, as if Avatar really was back with a brand new story. So naturally, I dove straight into Genji's history, where I found a treasure trove of incredible lore handcrafted just for this new Avatar's era. In this video, I'll combine my canon knowledge with everything I've learned about Genji to show you 25 hidden details and easter eggs that you missed in Genji's prologue opening episode. Just think of it as overanalyzing Genji. Woo, okay, moving on. The prologue opens with a close-up shot of three framed photos memorializing Avatar Korra. Because, in case you forgot how this works, for us to get a new avatar for this series, uh, Korra's, uh, yeah, Korra's dead. No, I'm just kidding. On this channel, we stan Avatar Korra. Back to these photos, one shows Korra alone, with what looks like a water tribe with Trovo necklace. She was never shown wearing one before, so we can assume it was probably carved by Asami. The last year depicted in canon was 174 AG, AG meaning after the genocide of the Air Nomads, so Korra and Asami must have gotten engaged sometime soon after that. Speaking of which, the photo almost out of frame probably shows their wedding, with Korra wearing a white variation of her formal water tribe dress. Clearly grieving, the widowed Asami holds the third photo, which shows the departed avatar alongside her closest friends. Using Milo as a gauge, we can assume this photo was taken sometime soon after Kobira's defeat in 174 AG. Mako's arm is strategically hidden so he can't tell if he's in a cast or not. That would have helped us pinpoint the exact time the photo was taken, but oh well. Before we conclude this vigil, I wanted to say a few words. We see that Asami is also wearing a betrothal necklace, and I really appreciate the detailing on it. Along with some more traditional water tribe patterns, Kor also included a little gear icon, representing Asami's work as an engineer. In this shot, we can actually see Jinora back there with the crowd, before she joins Asami on stage. There's a tatted up Master Airbender behind her. It does not look like Kai at all, but it could be Milo all grown up. A little to the left, we see another female airbending master sporting an airbending necklace very similar to the one worn by Aang and Makiyatsu. It seems pretty likely that all of Tenzin's kids would be present. So I'll guess that's Iki standing with her youngest brother Rohan, who is also a master. Finally, we pan out and see that this Virgil is taking place in Airtable Island's ceremony room. So this is the exact same stage where Janora's airbending tattoos were once revealed. First, thank you all for being here, for traveling so far to pay your respects. Now we get a good look at Janora. I know from reading up on Genji's history that Korra died at the age of 39. That would make her the second youngest avatar, only outliving her waterbending predecessor, Kurok. So that's a tough look for my wet homies. But that also lets us know that this scene is taking place 18 years after the end of The Legend of Korra, and that the Janora in front of us is 32 years old in the year 192 AG. What immediately stands out about Janora is her hair. There's a lot of it, which is just great visual storytelling because it shows how the Air Nation has modernized with the times and abandoned some of their more archaic traditions. Janora is also donning a cape that's very reminiscent of the one worn by Tenzin when he was the Air Nation's de facto leader. It's difficult to fathom why tragedy strikes. Why those we love and admire are taken away from us so suddenly, so unexpectedly. 
In these shots of Ba Sing Se, we can see that this giant core statue is actually being paraded through the city by a group of earthbenders. And then we zoom in on this guy. Now this is Bao Jun, the new president of the Earth Federation. That's the new overarching Earth Kingdom replacement government set up by Korra and Prince Wu following the collapse of Kovira's Earth Empire. Now I know he's looking kind of sus being framed in front of all these Dai Li agents, but that's because before being elected president, he was actually their leader. Just like Long Fang, so we'll be sure to keep an eye on him. A few days ago, we lost someone. A woman whose compassion, resilience, and strength served as a beacon of hope and light for all. Next is an overhead drone shot of Royal Caldera City, which, if you didn't know, is the canon name of the Fire Nation capital. We see Fire Lord Izumi flanked by the Fire Sages. They're wearing the same white attire worn by Oza and Young Zuko and Azula 97 years earlier at Fire Lord Azulan's funeral. I think this could be some type of elk fish hybrid animal, like maybe a catfish because it has those whisker things and fins, but I am very unsure. It's just kind of weird looking. There's a lot of white flower imagery used throughout the entire prologue is giving me white lotus vibes for sure but then again it's probably just an unrelated morning thing a very somber looking general iro the second is actually showing off of it he already had four of these pin things in the legend of korra but this metal is brand new i wonder what he did to deserve it it must have been pretty crazy because when he did all of this to try to stop the equalist he got jack squat her legacy can be seen in the eyes of the airbenders she has saved it's felt in the hearts of the friends and family she's left behind. Back on Air Temple Island, we see even more airbending masters. These must have been the earliest recruits right after harmonic convergence. This guy with the glasses has got to be Otaku. He was the one who tried way too hard to impress Tenzin in the early classes. This guy with the goatee is young. He was hyping up Boomy that one time. How come you grew up to be so cool? Well, Tenzin became such a stick in the mud. This last male master doesn't really resemble any of the other named harmonic convergence airbenders like Ryu or Gao. But this unnamed woman is definitely the same one who was next to Kai during Janora's tattoo ceremony. It's nice to see that some airbenders, like this kid, still choose to wear more traditional airbending garb. It can be found in the blinding light of the spirit portals that unite our worlds. We get a brief glance at all the spirit portals. You might be wondering why the Republic City portal looks just as messy now as it did when it was created two decades before. It's because in one of the canon core comics, the portal and surrounding area were declared to be sacred land by President Zhu Li, so clearing out all the spirit vines would be illegal. Yesterday, my father spoke about how all of life is reflected in the changing of the seasons. Life is a cycle. Change is inevitable, and it's something to be embraced, not feared. Next, we get some talk about the seasons. This is a pretty common theme across the entire franchise because Avatar's creators, Mike and Brian, were heavily inspired by the changing seasons. The seasons helped guide them to the idea of the four elements and the cyclical Avatar cycle. And like the cycle of the seasons, the cycle of the Avatar began anew. And you know how the episodes are grouped by Book 1 Water, Book 2 Earth, etc? Well, Bryke almost called them Book 1 Winter, Book 2 Spring, so the more you know. And then of course, what's a prologue without a little bit of foreshadowing? We get a blink and you miss it silhouette of a massive dark spirit looming over Genji's world. We mourn the sudden passing of Avatar Korra, but we can also celebrate the birth of a new Avatar. The future may be uncertain, but Korra's spirit lives on. I have faith that the cycle of the Avatar has begun anew. I'll point out now that the song playing throughout the entire prologue is called Sadness, so you know, Hans Zimmer could never. In the final lines of her speech, Janora goes on about having faith that the Avatar cycle will continue. The reason that Janora's reassurance is so important here is because truthfully, they have no idea what will happen now. Following the events of LOK Season 2, Korra lost connection with all of her past lives due to the brief destruction of the Avatar spirit Rava. So for all they know, Korra might have been the last Avatar. Or maybe she became the new first Avatar, they just have no clue. But we of course know that the 
cycle does continue and that Genji is the next avatar. And now that I've broken down the prologue, you're ready to dive into chapter 1 and meet all of the new characters including Genji, the fake avatar Luan, Jinora's son Kelsang, the first black member of team avatar Maya, and many more. Leave a like if you want more Genji videos as new chapters release every two weeks. And be sure to check out The Legend of Genji on their official YouTube channel, link below. Hit subscribe if you've rewatched Avatar at least twice, and I'll see you later.